Hi there, this is Mr McTaggart and in this video we're going to look at the equation of a straight line formula. Then we're going to look at the first formula, 1 of 2, the y equals mx plus c formula. And my recommendation is that we use this one whenever the y-intercept is known to us. So the formula we're going to be using is y equals mx plus c. But I'll explain this to you a wee bit more in a couple of slides. So before I start, I want to show you the most basic straight line there is on the planet. This blue line has the equation y equals x because if we look very closely at it, it's a perfectly diagonal line. It goes through each box exactly. And if I was to plot some coordinates here, that would be the coordinate 1, 1. Um, this would be the coordinate 3, 3. Um, this one down here would be the coordinate minus 4, minus 4. And you'll notice that the x and the y coordinates always match on them. So they're like the exact same. So that's why this has the equation y equals x. Okay. Now, as we start to add things in front of the x or after the x, this line will change and move. And I would in a class, I would show this in a graphics calculator. Today, I'm doing it just by a series of images. And I hope it kind of um, plays out just as well as it would on the graphics calculator. So this blue line will be here for all these little slides, y equals x, okay? Now remember, when we write y equals x, there's a secret number 1 in there. So the gradient of this line is 1, and if I take any little triangle and do the old vertical over horizontal, I get the gradient is 1. If I make another triangle here, I've got 2 over 2, which is just 1. If I use it with the old coordinates and do... 3 take away 1 over 3 take away 1, I get 2 over 2, which is 1. So the gradient of this line is 1. It goes perfectly diagonally through every one box. Okay. So on this one, in the red line, I've drawn in the line y equals 2x. Now, can you see what that line, what has happened? When I stick the number 2 in front, that line has got a lot steeper. And if I just pull out a little triangle from this one, that is two boxes vertical, one box horizontal, so that's gradient is 2. And its equation is y equals 2x. Can you hear me stressing there the number 2? Here is one more line. This is the y equals 1 third x. And if I was to pull out a little triangle here on this line, its vertical would be 1, its horizontal would be 3. So its gradient would be 1 over 3, which is a third. And the equation of that line is y equals a third x. Are you getting what I'm saying? So basically, if I stick a number in front of that x, you can clearly see it changes the angle of the line, which we now know is the word gradient, the steepness. So that is the connection there. The number in front of the x is our gradient. Okay. Now, I'm going to take you to the original line here. This is a line y equals x. What would the line y equals negative x look like, do you think? Well, you should already know that an upward sloping line is a positive gradient. So a downward sloping line would have a negative gradient. Now, without me having a ruler here, I'm going to do the best I can. So the downward sloping line would look like this. So this one here would be, the, I went a wee bit off at the end there, but forgive me, okay? So this would be the line y equals negative x. So you can see that it's basically reflected upside down or it slopes down the way. And if I was to pick a coordinate, for example, this would be negative 3, 3. Or another one over here, this would be 2, negative 2. And you'll see that y, the y coordinate is always the negative of the x coordinate. Okay. But anyway, let's go back to just this y equals x line. We've already discovered the number in front denotes the gradient, okay? And if it's negative, it will be a downward sloping line and so on. What happens if I stick a number after the x? So if I stick an add 2 or an add 3, let's see what happens. So this red line is the equation y equals x plus 3. Now you might see another little number 3 on the screen, which is here. Now both these lines are parallel. They are the same distance apart. If I pull out any little triangle on it, for example, here, that's 2 over 2, which is a gradient of 1. Here's another one over here, 1 over 1, gradient of 1. These lines are parallel. But what has that 3 done? What is the plus 3 on the equation done to the red line? Well, you might see the original line pass through the origin, 0, 0. My new line passes through 0, 3. So plus 3 has done exactly what it says on the tin. It's moved it up 3. So it's slid it up 3. 
and three is also the number it goes through on my y-axis. This green one here is the equation y equals x minus two. And you'll notice that this one has slid down two. It's still parallel to my blue one and it goes through minus two on the y-axis. So the connection here is, is the number at the end, the plus or minus number, is how much it moves up or down. And it's also got a very fancy name. It's called a y-intercept. So intercept is where it cuts through on the y-axis. So whatever number it goes through on the y-axis is your y-intercept. So this is a bit where I'd probably get you to start copying down if you're doing this in class. This here is the general equation of a straight line. There is a second formula, which you'll meet again later on, but this is the most basic one. And I like this one only when you can see the y-intercept on the y-axis. If you don't get given the y-intercept, then I like to use the other formula, which you'll meet later. So just to generalise, we already discussed that the number in front of the x was our gradient, and the number at the end, which could be a plus or a minus, was your y-intercept, where it cuts through on the y-axis. All right, so let's go play about with this formula and do some examples. So example one, if I already know that a line has a gradient of five and it cuts at zero minus three, I'm going to write what the equation of that line is. So I'm going to start by writing the general equation y equals mx plus c. Now I know that my gradient is five and m is the letter that stands for gradient. And then this coordinate here, zero minus three, we'll picture that for a wee second. That would be along zero, down three, that's my y-intercept. So the y-intercept or the c value is negative three. And then all we have to do is substitute them into the equation. So I replace m with the number five and I replace c with the negative three. Now I don't need to write plus minus three. If the y-intercept is negative, just make that minus three. And it doesn't ask you to sketch it, but I just always like to sketch the line to give you an idea of what this looks like. So we already know it's cutting at minus 3 on the y-axis. 5 is a positive number, so it's an upward sloping line like that. That's what that would look like if you were to do a little sketch of it. Okay? Right, question 2. In reverse, this time I've given you the equation, and I want to know what is the gradient and what is the y-intercept. Now, remember the gradient is whatever is in front of the x because it's y equals mx plus c. Now, a quick glance at this, this is a wee bit back to front. A lot of time you'll see the line written in the wrong order, purely because it's not always nice to start with a negative. So I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit, and I'm going to write it as minus 3x plus 6. So the gradient is whatever's in front of the x. It's not always the first thing in the equation, which my class always fall for. So the gradient is minus 3. And the y-intercept is a plus 6 bit. But when you're writing the y-intercept, I really, really like the y-intercept written as a coordinate. So I'm going to write it as 0, 6. All right. And if I was to sketch this line, this would be the line going through 6 on the y-axis. Now, negative 3 means it's a downward sloping line. So it would look like this. And I do apologise that I don't have... Um, straight lines when I'm drawing these but you get the idea. So this would be a good point if you wanted to pause the video and go try playing around with this and writing down from the equation here on the left hand side what you think the gradient and what the y-intercept is. Draw your attention to questions six and nine they might catch you out a wee bit and if you don't want to do them don't there's more examples coming after this but you could pause and then when you unpause there are the answers there as well. And I just want to quickly go over question six, which I mentioned be careful with. Question six has no number bit on the end. So that means it went through the origin of zero, zero. Okay. Doesn't mean it doesn't have a y-intercept. Every line has a y-intercept. Okay. At some point. So if there's no number, it goes through zero, zero. On this one down here, you might be thinking, oh, there's no x value. Well, remember, no x value just means it would be zero x. So there's no gradient. Uh, sorry, not there is no gradient, it just means the gradient is zero. And what you've actually got there is a horizontal line that goes through the number six on the y-axis. All right. I said I'm going to do some more examples. I'm really into making sure you can sketch a straight line because example B here comes up quite often in exam pass papers. So sketch a possible line for y equals 3x minus 2. Well, 3 means we've got an upward sloping line. Minus 2 means it's going to cut somewhere below so I'm just going to mark on minus two 
on the y-axis and we've said it's an upward sloping line so I'm going to do my upward sloping line there. Ideally it would be like a lot better if it went through the point I'd already made. So that would be a possible um, sketch for that and as long as you label where it goes through the y-axis you're good. This one's a bit tricky because you might think oh god where's our numbers going? So I'm going to just test if you've been listening. If A is less than zero that means we've got a negative gradient so we've got a downward sloping line like that. If B is greater than zero, that means that my y-intercept is a positive number. So I'm just going to pick anywhere on the positive bit of the y-axis and I'm going to draw a downward sloping line. And all I have to do is make sure, like on the previous one, I labelled minus two because that was y-intercept. On this one, my y-intercept is just B, so I'm going to label that little bit as B. So A negative, downward sloping line, B positive, positive y-intercept. So watch out for that. Okay, now we're on to the real deal. This is the real part of finding the equation of the line. This is like a nice little exam or a test question. So to find the equation of the line, there are three things to do. You need your gradient, you need your y-intercept, and then you're ready to go get the equation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my, my points x1, y1, x2, y2. And remember, you only skip that if you're super, super good at this. And then we write out our gradient formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then we're going to plug in the numbers. So this is where I like to use my different colour pens. So we have got 4 minus... And I'm writing the minus before I even look at the second number. Minus 6. Now that double negative turns into a big old plus. And then it's over. And I'm going to do... The other bits, so I'm going to do 0 minus 3... I'm using the wrong pens here. So it gives us 0 minus 3. Now if you do that, 4 plus 6 is 10. 0 minus 3 is minus 3. It doesn't simplify, so we leave it as that. Although I'm a wee bit pernickety and I like the minus to be brought to the top where possible. So we've got minus... Oh, I just went to write it upside down. So we have minus 10 over 3. That minus doesn't look the clearest on the top there. Okay, so there is my gradient. My y-intercept, you might be thinking, oh, how do I know that? I don't have a picture. This coordinate here is your y-intercept. Remember, 0, 4 means along 0, up 4. So my y-intercept is 4. So I'm just going to write down that c equals 4. And that's a really good tip. For all the time it takes you to write c equals 4, it really saves your bacon. If you make a wee mistake and have the wrong c value and you write the wrong thing there, you still get the the follow-through mark for putting it into the equation. But if you don't write what C is and you use the wrong number, you lose two marks, I'm afraid. So plug this in. Y equals our gradient is minus 10 thirds. And then X and C was 4, so plus 4. So there is the equation of my line. Let's go. This time we're doing it from a picture. Um, be careful with this coordinate here. That is a long 0 up 5. So I'm writing 0, 5. And then 6, 10. I'm going to label it x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm going to do my gradient formula. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Let's do our subtractions. So we have 10 minus 5 for the y's. And then for the x's, we will have 6 take away 0 which leaves us with 5 over 6. Now, again, this one doesn't simplify. Not a great choice of numbers on my part. A lot of times these do simplify, and if you don't simplify, you'll drop marks, okay? So just be careful. Um, the next thing I'm going to make sure I write down is what my C value is. Now, my C value can either come from the coordinate or I can go back to the picture. It clearly goes through 5 on the y-axis, so I'm going to use C equals 5. The equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. Let's replace m and c with 5 sixths. Don't forget your x and then plus 5. So there is the equation of my line. Last one. Of this has been a long video, I know. So how else can they ask you to get the equation of the line? Well, they can give it from a picture, okay? Now, I very kindly highlighted a lot of dot coordinates that you could use in blue, all right? So a lot of time you're just given a complete blank grid okay there'll be numbers on the x-axis but I can't be bothered putting them in it's quite difficult to do so um 
what you do is you have to pluck off coordinates yourself. Now, your coordinates um, have to be exactly on the black square. So, for example, you would not use this as a coordinate because it is halfway through a box. You can't be sure. So, we can use any of these four blue dots. Now, my... Um, my advice would be try and always use the positive ones. So I would always say, right, I want to use these two here to avoid using negatives at all. Um, but I'm just for game's sake, I want to use one with negatives. I haven't done a lot of examples using negatives and I haven't done a lot of examples where things simplify. And I just want to make sure I do for you on this one. So I'm going to use um, this coordinate here and, oh, this coordinate here. Why not? I'm going to use the end two. But you could use any of those four. And ideally, normally, I would use the two positive ones. However, so this coordinate down the bottom would be negative 2, negative 6. Now, my advice would be to always take your coordinates from left to right. That way, um, it just makes uh, all the negative numbers a wee bit nicer with the double negatives and things like that. So I've done the one on the left first. The other coordinate would be 1, 6. Let's label them x1, y1 and x2, y2. I'll do my gradient formula. Y is Y on top. Good way to remember it. And then we'll plug these in. So subtracting the Y's, I've got 6 take away. And I've written that down before I look at the next number. Negative 6. That turns into a big old plus. And then that is over. Subtract the X's. I've got 1 minus minus 2. Again, I wrote down the minus before I looked at the second number. Oh, lots of double negatives here, so that becomes a plus as well. So we end up with 6 plus 6, which is 12, 1 plus 2, which is 3, and then that simplifies down to 4 over 1, but we don't write the 1. It's just 4. 12 divided by 3 is just 4. So my gradient is 4. My y-intercept from the picture is here. It goes through the number 2, so c equals 2. So for the equation of a line, y equals mx plus c. Plug in your numbers. Gradient is 4, C is positive 2, so plus 2. Now, this has been a right long video. This would cover about two periods in class, okay? I've tried to cover a lot of the most basic equation of a straight line in one video for you as I can. I hope it's helped. Good luck. Bye-bye.